uh, uh, say one or two sentences about uh, your, what you do and who you are? Sure thing. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here on the stage. I'm Claudio Kunji. I'm Chief Product Officer at Strengths. We are a fintech that uh, is focused on evolving customer engagement for small business and uh, retail customers. And uh, yeah, pleasure to be here today, guys. Hey. <laughs> Hi everybody, super nice to meet you. My name is Stephanie. I'm the head of design for Erste Group. That means I'm leading our design department for George Business, George Junior, George Retail, and all other customer facing interfaces across the bank. Hello everyone, uh, this is Giza Mers, and I am responsible from the digital tribe of ING Turkey. And uh, we have uh, UI, UX designers, developers, and so on. Um, it's lovely to be, to be here. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Andreas Schrung, and I'm leading Ergomen Digital Product Design. We are UX and product strategy agency, and we work mostly with banks and uh, fintech companies. Thank you very much all for the introduction. Uh, so we've got a really nice uh, mix here because we've got people from banks, but we also have uh, the other side, the, the fintech technology providers, uh, agencies. Maybe, uh, uh, Andras, when you were the last one uh, to talk, hey, uh, could you tell me uh, from your point of view, what are the trends that you see right now in UX, UR design uh, in, uh, in banking? What are the trends right now? Like uh, regarding uh, business banking, I think the the main trend that uh, we try to ca uh, catch up basically uh, to the retail interfaces. So like it's a big movement uh, to to bring the same standards into uh, business banking. Apart from that, I think what is quite important uh, that. Um, uh, we try to enrich business banking with integrations. It's quite much happening that uh, to integrate business banking, the accounting part, uh, and there are some solutions where you can integrate contracting to business banking. But currently, I think uh, everybody is preparing for that to, to make this triangle basically what could uh, help a lot um, businesses to be much more effective and, uh, and run banking in a more automatic way. Awesome, thank you. Claudio, do you, the, do you see the same thing, that it needs to be interconnected with uh, different parts, or what are the trends that you see that are important in UX and UI? Yes, it's a, it's a very good point. Um, talking specifically about small business customers, I definitely see a very big challenge ahead in the sense of uh, what I see from our perspective is that um, we get into a context where we do not only work anymore with simple straight use cases, straight customer journeys as it was kind of several years ago. Now we go more into a direction of uh, working with uh, multiple data points, uh, different journeys that starts on different channels and end up or maybe multi-channel, right? So you may start on one channel for a specific journey and end it up on a different channel. Um, let me make you the, the, the straight example. Um, we see that uh, on mobile, for instance, uh, the small business customers will actually perform straight use cases, like checking cash flow, uh, performing straight payment, checking invoicing status. So quick operations for which you need fast access thanks to insight driven engagements. You do not have time to waste. You need really to get uh, right to the information you need before even searching for it. Different is talking about a UX that is mainly focused on a desktop channel. For instance, when you open up your desktop interface, you would want to check your invoicing status, the specific exposures you have uh, versus your specific client portfolio or uh, specific invoicing reconciliations. So operations that wants to support, sorry, that have a wider um, navigation time implies more analysis, more data visualization. So the UX is quite affected, right? Because this may end up in a different type of navigation. Less insight driven, more focused on data analytics, data analysis from the small business customers. So I think all these trends uh, have to be taken into account while thinking on the specific journeys and how to think of them for the specific device and the specific segments as we're talking here, of course, about small business. Makes sense, makes sense. How do you see it, Stefan, from the bank perspective? 
Do you, do you see the same trends as well? Yes, <laughs> in a nutshell, of course. So I fully agree with what you said. The other thing we observe is the following. So I believe um, most digital applications now, they have a rather high standard when it comes to the usability. So I think it's not enough anymore to just have a good usability. It, this is not a distinction factor anymore. So we have to surpass this also in business banking. So people got used to the retail applications, which are really excellent. And how can we now translate this also into the business worlds, of course? So this is something that we aspire to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, how do you see it in an ING? I don't know. Do you yeah. hear me? Okay. Thank you. Um, when we look at the UI and UX trends, um, uh, we see that still personalization is quite important, but we are not talking about the personalization. It's hyper-personalization. Um, and also, secondly, uh, as you mentioned, we have lots of platforms and we have to... Um, uh, connect these uh, platforms very clearly, very easily. Uh, I think these are uh, two main uh, important things uh, right now. Uh, make it easy, simple, uh, still uh, very crucial. Uh, I think uh, hyper-personalization uh, is uh, super critical. Interesting. So uh, let's stay with you. Uh, uh uh, for a little bit, uh, I'm thinking. Okay, so that's uh, interesting trends: uh, hyper personalization, customer journey, and uh, if I think also at the end of the day, we want to uh, quantify this somehow, measure this that this was a successful, you know, uh, change. Uh, how do you measure these things? Uh, you know, if you, for example, put boot on here, if you make a special text here or color, or what are actually the KPIs that you measure? Um, as ING Turkey, uh, we encourage our customers to do their financials through digital channels. It's really important because we know that when we listen to our customers, just we hear that their time is so precious so precious, and the, they don't have any uh, support mechanism to leave their jobs. So um, I think uh, it is really important uh, for us to create really seamless and uh, friction-free customer journeys. And uh, let me give you uh, an example. Uh, when we look at our customers, 95% of them fully digital right now. And when we uh, look into uh, deep dive, we see that uh, our digital active customers log into our channels two times in a day, which means that we have a very high engagement ratio. So um, if we look at uh, this type of customers, we have four main pillars. Uh, first one is we try to offer really, really personalized offers in our digital channels. Let me give you an example. Uh, all banks right now in Turkey have instant lending uh, in uh, their value proposition in digital banking. But what we are trying to do, be more proactive. When we got uh, our customers in, uh, in our digital channels, we proactively analyze their behavior. But we are not doing it one time, recurrently analyzing their behavior. and. We are not just offering them uh, what they are looking for, but proactively offer them uh, new solutions. Secondly, I think intuitive uh, navigation is really, really critical because we know that when we look at our customers, they are not uh, working with us. They are averagely working with three different banks, which means that they are interactive with three different mobile apps, three web uh, sites, so intuitive navigation crucial for us. Naturally, they have to find what they are looking for. So I think these are really important. When you ask me how you calculate, how you know what they are feeling about their um, application, um, we are regularly asking uh, MPS questions to our customers to analyze whether they like it or they don't like it. So I think regularly analyzing our customers are uh, really important. We are collecting these data and uh, according to these data, we are making funnel analysis, we are changing our funnels and so on. Um, I think uh, this is the uh, main thing uh, from us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Just a quick question to this and uh, how do you collect this data, for example, as like questionnaires or yeah definitely end of the um, instant lending let's uh, give an example we are asking one question did you like it uh, one to five and uh, if they are clicking one star we are asking questions why do you give one 
thank you, thank you, Stephanie. How do you do it uh, in Arista? Uh, <coughs> quite similar. So there are two components. The one is before anything goes into production, of course, there's really extensive UX research. So we do this even on the whiteboard level, prototype testing, early on user testing. We do this with our business customers. Um, we at any time have a lot of service going on and so on. Then when we believe we're extremely solid, it goes into production. And then, of course, we still ask for feedback. So this can be done at the end of the flow, for example. We have a mixture of standardized service, also very similar, one to five. If it's negative, open feedback. And we also have some in-house metrics that we also ask for. So we do a combination of this combined with tracking to also see the funnel, what works, what doesn't work, investigate why is there a big jump off at this point, what can be done to improve. And so we have this continuous iteration of always making it better, better, better. Never ending story. Claudio, uh, uh, how, because at the end of the day, uh, banks working with you, they want to see some results, right? What are the KPIs that uh, uh, yes. they measure with you? Yes, I mean, it's, um, I think it was very interesting what you said also, in particular for ING, but let me maybe do a couple of steps back. So what is hyper-personalization? Meaning it's the ability to try to uh, build an experience based on your behavior. The way this is born, it's not in financial industry, right? So it's born in media, uh, media platforms, social media, e-commerce platform. So how do we understand hyper-personalization is? Let me make an example. If I watch on Netflix, The Matrix, as a movie, what is the probability of being targeted the next movie as John Wick? Because it's a similar movie with similar actors that actually I liked I may like because I have been watching Matrix. So the KPI for understanding how the personalization, if the personalization worked, should be if I'm going to be watching John Wick. Meaning, am I matching my customer preferences, understanding his historical series? And this simple example is what actually is trying to drive the way we build our platform for financial institutions. Meaning, we of course, do not use cookie. We base ourselves on the transactions because it's about the transactions that builds our behavior within the banking, right? So starting from reading transactions instead of cookies and instead of movies, of course, we understand the customer's behavior, which I believe was what you were somehow trying to refer to. So once we understand the customers and we are able to give this kind of Mm, segmentation, we then are able to build up clusters on top of the, the segmentation we build, and then trying to see what's going to be upcoming for him, make predictions, not in terms of movie again, but not only in terms of financial products and cross-selling, at least this is our belief in strands. So we try to build a hyper-personalization based on needs. So that need could be, of course, access a credit line, because this is the small business core need is, I need money to run my business. And I will opportunistically do with banks so to get the best opportunity out there, right? But not only in our opinion. It's about getting timing communications, upcoming payments, cash flow projections, uh, and corrective actions. So I may have to set a budget. I may need to stay on top of my finances by set a path by set up provisioning because I need to pay my taxes in six months. So I need to start taking care of this right now. Otherwise, I will not make it in six months. So to us at Strengths, this is the way we try to envision and we build actually our experience with our customers. Is so working on the data to build specific journeys that wants really to be tailored thanks to hyper-personalization for the small business customers. But trying to go a bit beyond from our perspective uh, as it was well said, so trying to, I believe, go on the cross-selling, but then being the financial partner. So in my opinion, the way we envision is banks are the natural financial partner for the customer. So you need to be the personal companion in the life, no? So trying to provide you the financial product, but also the right advice, you know? Maybe sometimes you just need an advisor calling you and telling you things like, hey, but have you ever thought of getting a factoring for the invoices you have over there and that nobody's paying to you? I take care of it. So you run your business. This is the way we try to envision. And so the KPIs, back to your questions, are this touch point. Is the customer interacting with the insights we are sending to them? 
this is the KPIs we have to look, is the engagement rate with the content that we shape around his behavior. Thank you very much, uh, Andras. Uh, when you are working with ba banks and advising them, you know, sometimes creating a projects for them as well, uh, what are the KPIs that they measure working with you? Or maybe sometimes you advise them to measure as well. So what are those? Uh, usually, like when we work with banks, like we integrate into their teams. So it's, how to say, very hard to measure the concrete performance in that case. So uh, we don't have usually concrete KPIs for these processes. Like uh, regarding when we work with banks, still we uh, experience quite often that they don't have very concrete KPIs regarding user experience. So they, uh, they have a kind of vague expectations regarding UX and UI, how to make it uh, more effective, so usually we guide them in this process to find their own KPIs and uh, open up their eyes that uh, what to, like basically like, what we like to explain them that when you want a good interface, good is a very relative um, notion. So it depends what is your KPI, the good is different. So recently we had a conversation regarding corporate banking in an Asian bank and uh, we were talking that what you want to achieve, you want to um, make your current customer base happier and more engaged, or you want new customers, because it needs a bit different approach. Of course, there are some standards, but uh, depending on your goals, the answer is slightly and sometimes dramatically different. And this is what they have to understand that I still it's still forming, even in retail. And so what if uh, I'm a bank and I want new customers, but I want my uh, you know, customers that I have right now happy? So what shall I do? Uh, <laughs> so suppose so you want to achieve your mate. Uh, I think uh, that you have to run different kind of research, for example. So if you want to focus more on your customer uh, base, you have to run those type of research, what is more about long time usage. So for example, uh, observational methodologies or diary study. Uh, currently, we are evaluating how you can have like kind of micro research with with AI that is just asking questions here and there about your experience. So you need this type of methodologies when you uh, want to have new customers. Uh, you go more for the standard interviews or testing because it's more like. A, communication and usability problem and less an engagement problem. So you use different kind of um, methodologies to understand their needs better. Interesting. Uh, could we touch upon this as well uh, from the bank's perspective? What type of researches do you do? Because uh, how do you find the, this information like the, the, the Andras was discussing right now? It Honestly, I think it's pretty well established, right? The type of research that is needed for that. It can be exactly like you mentioned, based on what you find out. It can be qualitative, quantitative. It can be done in the existing flows. You can ask, uh, you can invite people for interviews and so on. So I think that's not so hard to figure out, to be super honest. <laughs> I mean, obviously, somebody has to ask for it at the bank. I think that might be the bigger challenge that they actually realize what is the importance of having this amazing user experience because that's where it starts and we have the pleasure at least at Erste that for us it's super clear that superior user experience equals growth and we see this and we know this and that's why we put such a high emphasis on it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anything to add? this no research no, is same. awesome uh, i would add just uh, that what i think that it's still missing most of the banks regarding research that uh to evaluate the functionality what they need so that like most of the banks they started to deploy the standard methodologies but uh feature research and feature prioritization is still very weak in most of the banks so it's mostly the decisions are coming from business that we want this and this feature and we don't know why Interesting. I mean, what we do, for example, is we evaluate upfront the value that this feature could bring to our customers. So to be sure there is actually additional value, so are we solving the right problem by this new proposition? Yes, but it's not very common. Oh, so yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You do it well, but most of the banks, they don't do this. Thank you. Uh, you, Andras, mentioned AI, and the topic is, of course, trending right now. And uh, also, this is uh, you can see on the pictures that 
apparently uh, uh, it kind of signify signifies the AI. How uh, do you use AI right now to improve the the UX in banking? Oh, Andras, uh, you already touched upon it, so let's start with you. So you said that you mentioned uh, you mentioned that uh, you use AI for researches. Also, do you think that there should be a, uh, some AI features, for example, to improve the UX or an UI? Or yes, I think when we are talking about how to use AI uh, in user experience, there are two ways of that. One of them that like you make uh, the actual UX work more effective or uh, higher quality, and the other one that you propose that kind of solutions what are based on AI. So it's important to differentiate between these two things. I think. AI-based solutions like uh, personalization, what we are talking about, it's quite important. And I think in business banking, it has like three layers. Because when you talk about retail, uh, you have to personalize for a person. In business, you have to personalize on the person, on the role, and the type of the company. So you have three layers, and you have to combine this, what is even more complex, and makes standard uh, segmentations even harder. So in this respect, AI is a big help here. And also, I think chat and voice-based solutions are very critical in this respect because you can serve more effectively and quicker in random times the, the small businesses. Uh, regarding standard UX, I think it's still experimentation phase. So you don't have, like, I don't know, you deploy a design system and do a consistency check with that. Figma is experimenting with many features already, so probably you can use many of these things soon and you can develop your own things, but there are no ready and safe solutions. But I think it's better to experiment early. When the time is coming, you would understand what you can do. Yeah. Ladies, would you like to add something from the bank perspective? Yeah, how do you um, use AI? It's really promising when we talk about AI and how it's going to affect um, UI and UX, but uh, still under um, discussion, really. Uh, when we uh, look at uh, how we are using chatbots, uh, definitely a very good uh, example, because uh, by uh, using generative AI, uh, we can analyze, understand the customers better, we can interact with customers more humanly, we can collect the data, and so on. I think. Uh, uh, customer support site, uh, chatbot is going to be one of the uh, key site. And uh, uh, second one, it makes uh, complex issues uh, more um, uh, efficiently, uh, such as uh, writing a code and so on. But still, uh, we are discussing it uh, very um, uh, widely because uh, we do not have um, any operative model right now, although we have in general we have an operation model but we are still discussing uh, operation model for AI. Um, I think it is really really important uh, to uh, find a good uh, and a valuable operation model for AI first then we will continue to implement it uh, to our processes. It's still at the beginning. Uh, Stefan, I do already uh, use everyday ChatGPT generate uh, new buttons or new designs of the mobile. Of course not. Air. Everything <laughs> is secure at Erste. <laughs> Never ever. Okay. Okay. No, no, I'm joking. So yes, no, I'm not joking. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so what we are trying to experiment is how how we can introduce AI in the design process. For example, in Figma, one thing I'm very interested in is accessibility checks and how could we automate them so that they would run over the screen and immediately point out inconsistencies there, what to improve. Also, when you give instructions for the, develop, uh, for the developers, maybe they could label it because currently this is all done manually. So this is something we want to invest in. The second would be we do UX heuristics checks and they could also be automated at least up front, and then we would do it additionally manually. And also, how can we incorporate UX research? So we have a lot of findings. How could we maybe feed them into a database, run them over the screen, and see if past research could already be applied to this? So this we are very interested. On the touch business side, we are currently piloting, piloting a feature on the servicing level to see how we can make um, stuff more findable in touch business. But it's not ready yet. <laughs> yeah. Claudio, uh, how do you use AI uh, with your within your processes already? Because you have all, uh, a lot of data, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the 
question, no? I mean, every customer I go is like, okay, how do you use AI? You know, you're a fintech, so you should tell us how we use AI. Uh, so, as you well said, there are two ways, no? Process-wise and business-wise. Process-wise, for sure, I am a believer that in a world where time to market is always more and more demanding, we have to get every six months, we need to release a new product, basically, for sure, Gen AI helps you. Uh, how it helps us? Uh, Figma it was well said. I believe this is definitely a very good way to build up new journeys faster and test them faster, realize them faster. Therefore, cost to serve likely will decrease, and especially for people like us. We focus on innovation. So everything we do is about innovating. So doing it faster will definitely be better. Uh, the second thing we work on... Uh, more or less what you said. We work a lot also in creating uh, usability tests. So we actually use it a lot also to create journeys and usability personas and the data set. Because then once you build a feature, you may end up in understanding that it's an edge case that only 1% of the people will use it. So at the end, maybe what you thought was not that valuable. So uh, it generates a lot of value, I believe, also to Gen.ai on the process on understanding um, by generating data sets and understanding what kind of edge case you're actually, actually hitting. So what percentile of the curve are you hitting in terms of potential adoptions? This is helping us a lot. Us. Um, on the business perspective, uh, I am quite um, skeptic, meaning uh, I see the chatbot. This is something that we already are piloting at some customers. I definitely see this use case. This is something that is there. It's a, it's a strong reality. For sure, this is something that still needs to be understood fully in terms of potential. I'm not saying I don't believe in it. I'm just saying that we need to understand how to focus the right use case in a LLM-based model. So um, we all understand so far the fact that, I read it in Forrester, it's about uh, the cognitive load, right? So you, you don't care anymore about reading stuff. You just want the answer, no? And because you play with Instagram and everything is about telling you what you want to know. You're not focused anymore, no? And this is a reality. This was said not by myself, right? And I definitely believe that in this sense, Gen AI is, of course, the, the answer, no? On finances and on suggesting the customers and focusing his attention on only a specific number, so decontextualizing it is something that I see banks wants to go in, but for sure there is a kind of, well, a risk, right? Because you're getting everything out of the context and putting it into a chat and pointing the focus only on that. Is it the answer? It's a way. I don't know if this is the answer. I see many pilots, challenger banks, especially our bank, uh, Lunar, uh, among others, are going into the Gen AI direction, piloting chatbots directly on, on the end users, but with specific use cases, right? So set a budget. How can I help you in setting a budget? How can I help you in uh, doing something that is specific, no? Uh, this is, to me, the challenge, is understanding how and on which type of use cases to pilot it, because definitely Gen AI is a trend that will hit sooner or later also the banking industry. There's no way uh, we cannot, of course, avoid it. Thank you very much. Maybe this is uh, another topic for uh, another panel discussion because uh, I suppose we could discuss this for another time. I don't have, if we have time for any uh, questions from the audience, we don't. So uh, if uh, you want to ask uh, anything to our speakers, then Please find them uh, after the panel discussion. I would like to thank you all for uh, the insights and information, and I hope I will see you in uh, another panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.